Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, in this video we are continuing with our simple scripting series. It occurred to me this week that we have yet to cover one of the most often used functionalities in Unity 3D, which is lerping. Now, lerping is not really something that is extremely difficult to integrate into a game, but there are a lot of posts and questions out there about it, so I figured, what the heck, let's create a simple lerping script. Now, our current scene is getting a little crazy, so I've gone ahead and created a new scene here, and basically all I've got right now is just a scene, I've got the main camera, directional light, and a platform for, or a cube for a platform. Now, I actually need to add in another cube, and let's zero out the position of this guy. We're gonna move it up a little bit, and now we're gonna move it over to this edge. Okay, I also need to create two empty game objects, so let's just do create empty. Again, we're going to, actually, let's make it a child of our new cube, and we're gonna zero out the positions so that this position is the current cube's position. And now we can unparent it, and let's duplicate it. And now we're just going to move this over to the other side of the platform. So that's really what we're going to need in this scene. We can make the cube a little prettier by like adding a material to it. And we can change the color of our floor. And also let's move our main camera. Actually, I think that main camera is positioned pretty well for this right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our new script. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script. And we're just going to call this script lerper. Now let's actually open up our project. I already have my project open up over here. And we're gonna open up our Lerper script. And now let's get down to the fun stuff. Okay, so first off, we're gonna need a couple of variables. We've got four public and two private variables that we're gonna need. We need two transforms. So we're gonna say public transform, and one's gonna be start position or start pause, and the other one's gonna be end pause. We are going to need a public bool, and we can just call this repeatable. And we can set it to false. Whoops, not minus false, equals false. And we're going to need a public float speed. And we can just set this to 1.0f. Now for our private variables, we're going to need two floats. We're going to need a float start time and a total distance. Okay, cool. So those are all the variables we need to get this script working like we want. Now, the first thing we're gonna actually do is change our start function to be an I enumerator. And we're doing this because we're going to create an I enumerator function to repeat the lerp. And in order to call an I enumerator method, the method we're calling from actually has to be an I enumerator. I hope that makes sense. Basically what we're doing here is we're gonna call an I enumerator function from within our start function. And in order for that to actually work, then start needs to be an I enumerator as well. If you don't have start set to an I enumerator, then you'll run into an error in Unity that says something like, you can't call an I enumerator from a method that is not an I enumerator. So the first thing we need to do within our start function is get our start time. So we're going to set start time is equal to time dot time. The next thing we need to do is get our total distance. So we're going to say total distance is equal to vector three dot distance. Whoops. Distance. And we're going to say start position dot position and our end position dot position. Okay, the next thing we actually want to do is create a while loop inside of our start function. So I'm going to say while repeatable, whoops. And I'm just going to add a comment here for now. We will fill this out in just a little bit, but I want to actually do our update function first. So we're gonna go ahead and say, if not repeatable, then we are going to get a current duration. So we're gonna say float current duration is equal to time dot time minus start time. And make sure you put that within parentheses and then we're gonna multiply that by speed. Next, we're gonna do a float journey fraction is equal to our current duration divided by the total distance. And finally, we're going to say this dot transform dot position is equal to vector three dot lerp. And we're going to pass in our start position 
dot position, our end position, dot position, and our journey fraction. Okay, and that's all we need inside of our update function. So let's just step through this really quickly so that we understand what's happening. So we're first checking to make sure that this is not repeatable. And if it's not, we're going to get our current duration, which is basically where we're at during the lerp based on time. The next thing we're going to do is get our journey fraction. So this is, again, figuring out how far along in the lerp we are. And finally, we are going to update our position based on the journey fraction. So this will lerp us from our start position to our end position based on our journey fraction. So basically what this does is it moves an object incrementally over time. Okay, so we also need to create our repeatable functionality. So we're gonna go down a little bit and create a public I enumerator and we can just call this repeat lerp. And inside of here we can pass a vector three A, a vector three B, and a float for time. So the first thing we actually need to do is get our fractions worked out as well. So we're gonna set a float i is equal to 0, 0.0f. We're gonna do a float rate is equal to parentheses 1.0f divided by our time, and then we're gonna multiply that by our speed. And then we're gonna say while i is less than 1.0, 0 f then we're gonna increase i so i plus equals time dot delta time times our rate and then we're gonna update our position so this dot transform dot position is equal to vector 3 dot lerp and we're gonna pass in a b and i okay so again let's step through this really quickly just to make sure we understand what's going on so when this is called Oh, I forgot something. So you can see that we've got an error here, so we actually need to return something here. So we're gonna yield return null. And you have to return something from an I enumerator. So that's why we ran into that little error. So again, let's step through this really quickly though. So the first thing we're doing is setting the variable I equal to zero. And then we're figuring out our rate. So our rate is gonna be one divided by the time. So one is basically the total distance we need to travel and we're multiplying that by speed and then we're saying while we have not reached our destination then we're going to increase i by time dot delta time times the rate and then we're going to update our position and finally we are returning null now let's go back up to our start function here let's remove this comment and we are just going to do a very simple yield return repeat whoops lerp and in here we can pass in our start position dot position, our end position dot position, and we can pass in a we can pass in a hard coded value here, or we could pass in pass in a variable. Now I'm going to pass in a hard coded value of 3.0f. And basically what this is going to do is this says how long it should take to complete this. Now we can just copy this line and paste it, because all we have to do here is actually move our in position to the first parameter and our start position to the second parameter. And let's go ahead and save it. Let's go back out to our scene now. If we click on our cube, we need to add our lerper script to it. We need to add a start position and an end position. Actually make sure I got those. Yeah, so pass in the start position and the position. I wanted to make sure that I was passing the correct game object there because if I passed my this one, then the block would sort of all of a sudden move over there and then lerp back. So make sure you're passing the right game objects there. And now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and do a test. Now it looks like based on where our camera's at, that the object, the cube is just going to lerp straight at the camera. So let's see what that does. We're just gonna press play and it looks like we've got an error. Cube one is not valid, invalid position. Hmm. Why is that an invalid position? That is interesting. This is an error that I have not seen before. Well, it's not really giving me a lot of information here. So let's actually go back out to our script. It looks like it's occurring on line 28 of the Lerper script. So if we look at this, this is giving this dot transform position is equal to vector three dot Lerp, start position dot position, end position dot position, 
journey fraction. So clearly something is happening to our journey fraction. Let's go ahead and look at, actually, you know what? I did, I passed in the wrong, <laughs> it looks like I passed in the wrong uh, game object. So let's pass that guy into there and save it and press play. Okay, there, it, it is moving. It's moving very slowly, but it is moving towards the camera very slowly. So let's up that speed. Whoops, that was really fast. <laughs> let's just double it, so two. And as you can see, it is sort of incrementally moving towards the camera. And now it should stop right below the camera. Let's actually move our camera. Uh, we're going to move it over to here so we can watch it go across. Uh, let's do 90. Now let's watch it move. So as you can see, it is just sort of slowly moving. There's not a whole lot of jitter or anything like that going on. Um, I'm going to have some of that because of the screen recording, but it looks pretty good there. You know, it is moving very slowly, but that's okay. All right, so now we actually want to test to make sure that the is repeatable is working. So let's check repeatable here and let's just press play and see what happens. Okay, so it is moving across. Boom. It's going back. Awesome. So it is actually repeating as well. So now let's pause, let's stop that again and we can actually go back out to our script. And I want to create a, another public variable. So we're going to create a public float and we're going to call this duration. And we're going to set it to 3.0 F initially. And instead of passing the hard coded value here, we're going to pass duration. All right, now let's save that and go back out to our scene. Wait for it to reload. Okay, so now that we've got our duration set up, leave it to three and we're going to press play. And this is going to be really interesting, okay? So as you can see, it's still moving at that sort of same speed we had earlier. But when I increase it in the middle of a lerp, it doesn't slow down. Instead, it slows down after it has completed the, the lerp. And that is occurring because we've already passed that initial duration and it's figuring out the, the, how long it should take based on that initial value we passed. So initially, we passed 3 and then we changed it to 30 in between the lerp, which will not work because the I enumerator has not exited yet. So if I bump this back down to 3 again, we can see it's going to go all the way to the end, taking that 30-something seconds. It's going to get there, and then it's going to speed back up. Okay, so that's just a really cool, fun script we can do. I am going to build on this script a little more, because there's a lot we can do with lerping, you know, from randomizing the lerp, adding multiple lerp positions, and things like that. So we are going to dive into that into in upcoming tutorials. Please be sure to drop us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, we've got a lot more coming, and as always, thanks for watching.